Well hello guys and welcome back to my channel and this this is the next chapter in our first aid series called shock. In this chapter we'll be discussing what is shock and how to deal with shock and how to treat someone with shock. Uh, we won't be going specifically into the different types of shock but uh, this will be our first lesson. Hi guys subscribe to my channel now so that you do not forget Hit that bell icon and get notified of my further uploads. Lastly, feel free to comment. Show me some love by giving me a thumbs up at the end of the video. So shock. Shock occurs when the body's tissue do not receive enough oxygenated blood. Recognizing shock. Signs of shock include the following. Altered mental status. Like agitation, anxiety, restlessness and confusion. You also get pale, cold and clammy skin, lips and nail beds, nausea and vomiting, rapid breathing and unresponsiveness. Care for shock. Place the victim on his or her back. Raise the legs 6 to 12 inches if spinal injury is not suspected. Raising the legs allow the blood to drain from the legs back to the heart. Place a blanket under and over the victim to keep the victim warm. Maybe we shouldn't say victim, let's just say the person that you are helping. Now one of the other biggest shocks that we get is anaphylaxis. Now when you have a severe allergic reaction, it is called anaphylaxis. It can be deadly within minutes if untreated. Many of the deaths are caused by the inability to breathe because swollen airway passages block air to the lungs. The most common cause of anaphylaxis would be medication like penicillin and so on food types like nuts, peanuts, eggs and so on. Insect stings, specifically bee stings because this is the one where we get the biggest cases of anaphylaxis. And certain plants, if you're allergic to a certain type of pollen or anything like that and you inhaled it, you could get anaphylaxis. Now these are usually the shock positions that you put a patient in. The, top, the above picture shows you how to lift the legs 6 to 12 inches to get the blood from the legs to the heart. The recovery position is the bottom one. Place people in this position to prevent them from aspirating when they are nauseous or vomiting. This is the best position when a person is unconscious too. It keeps the airway kind of open, you can still breathe very um, easily. The position that you're lying in there is very comfortable and if you do vomit it will all go out of your mouth and it will not uh, you won't be able to, you won't aspirate it. Aspirating it means that it's going into your airway. It won't happen if it's like this. And also put the patient on the left side when you are putting the patient in a recovery position. The simple reason for that is the way that your stomach lies in your body. If you put a person on the right hand side the stomach is at the top which means everything in the stomach can run out into the um, esophagus and then out. But putting a patient on the left hand side means that the stomach is hanging at the bottom like a little bag and everything that's in the stomach will lie inside the bag and would come out easily just for interest sake. Recognizing anaphylaxis. How do you know this guy's got an anaphylactic reaction? First of all he will have a breathing difficulty. When he struggles to breathe and you hear a wheezing sound like with asthma that's already a sign also he gets a skin uh, reaction so you get hives or red spots wherever it, um, he was stung his tongue mouth and throat will be swelling and that is the most severe cases that's why it's very important to get back up as soon as possible because that guy is not going to be able to breathe in a little while other signs which is not so severe is sneezing or coughing, tightness in the chest, blueness around the lips or mouth, dizziness, nausea and vomiting. So how do you take care of an anaphylactic um, shock patient? First of all call your ambulance as soon as possible let them get the ambulance there. Also tell the paramedics that you think this guy is having an anaphylactic reaction so that they can send an ALS with on the bus. Those are the guys that can give the atropine and adrenaline because that's what you need to reverse the reaction. Secondly, see if the person 
has medication or allergic re uh, for allergic reactions like um, antihistamine or in this case an EpiPen. An EpiPen is an epinephrine pen. It is what they give to children and so on to inject themselves with. It's already dosage to the correct dosage of the person that's using it and it's automatic. All you need to do is you remove the cap, support the person's thigh, place the the tip, in this case you see it's an orange tip, but sometimes it, goes a bl it has a black tip. On the outer thigh, press firmly and hold for a couple of seconds. And this will inject the medication or epinephrine. The person will start to feel better soon. Keep a responsive person sitting up. It will help him to breathe. And place an unconscious person in the recovery position, as you have seen before. Well, that's that, guys and girls. It's a very short chapter, not much to say about it. Any guys, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to this channel if you want to find out more about first aid. And remember to hit the bell icon twice if you want to get notified of any of my further updates. Until the next video, cheers.